Hey guys, today we're gonna be working in the basement on a bathroom that was just roughed in. We finished this thing and today I'm gonna to show you how we installed the toilet. We also built and installed this vanity, including all the plumbing, and we tiled this feature wall. Let's get right into it. Now when it comes to sealing tile, um, you really wanna seal it before you put grout on it. If you can, you want to seal it before it gets installed, that way it protects it from the mortar or the mortar staining the tile, especially a natural stone tile like we're working with. We're gonna be using limestone tile, um, a 12 inch by 24 inch tile, which is considered a lar large format tile. And since we're just doing a wall, we're gonna lay all the tile out on the floor first and seal it before we even start to install it. As far as the product we're using for the sealing process, we're gonna be using Miracle Sealant's 511 Impregnator. And this is a great product because it's not a, it's not a surface barrier. Um, it's actually a penetrating sealer um, designed for this specific process of protecting dense porous surfaces like what we're using, um, which is limestone. Now, before we could get started with the installation, we actually had to lay out the tile or figure out the layout that we wanted on the wall. We decided to line all of the joints up or butt them all up and have one straight full tile in the center of the wall. And then we would have two rows of three quarters of a tile um, on each side. So as far as what mortar to use with a large format tile, since we are installing a 12 inch by 24 inch, uh, limestone tile. This, can, this is considered a large format natural stone tile um, and we need to use the correct mortar uh, according to that tile. So what we went with was a large format natural stone mortar mix from Custom and that can be bought at Home Depot. Uh, and this is a perfect mix for installing tile on a wall because it, it doesn't sag. Um, it also has enough flex to it that it can uh, move with the wall a little bit and it has a little bit of forgiveness there. If you like videos like this and you wanna see more of them, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. And also don't forget to ring that bell right next to it so that you get notifications anytime we drop a new video. So when you're setting large format tile, you're gonna to wanna to use a half inch by half inch square notch trowel. That's gonna make sure that you get enough of uh, the suction to the wall or the floor and good coverage across the entire tile. But also, instead of just troweling, you're also gonna to wanna to add a skim coat, which is also known as back buttering, to the back of the tile before you apply it. And that's gonna make sure that you have full coverage um, even if some of these notches don't collapse all the way. So as far as the Levolution system goes, we've got three parts. We've got a universal spacer, and that universal spacer comes as a cross, um, and you can also break off the tabs to make it a T or to make it a flat. Um, it comes with, the other part of the system is the cap that goes over top of the spacer, and then the evolver, or revolver, as I like to call it. It's kind of like a gun. It goes over the cap, slides over the cap, and tightens down the cap onto the spacer and keeps that all those tiles nicely in line. So the nice thing about the spacers is that they have a nice wide area, a wide base below the tiles, um, but they also have these holes, so they're not taking away from the strength of the mortar bed to the tile adhe adhesion to the wall. They actually have the holes which allow adhesion through the spacer onto the wall. We did have a few locations that we needed to drill some holes, one being the water supply line coming out for the toilet, as well as the faucet locations. So we needed to drill holes large enough to accept those um, or to go over those faucet locations as well as the water supply line. And in order to drill those holes, 
You can't just use any standard bit, especially for a natural stone tile, which is super fragile. You're gonna to wanna to use a diamond tipped hole saw. And these can be purchased at most big box stores um, and they have them in varying sizes depending on the size of hole you need to drill. So the tiles have had over 24 hours to set up. The mortar is fully cured. Now we have to remove these caps and uh, essentially you take this uh, evolver tool and you tighten down the tensioning on it and you will just act like you're compressing this cap. You just press a little bit harder and then that whole cap will break off and the stem breaks off below the tile so that nothing is uh, past the surface of the tile. Once we get all of those removed, then we can start the grouting process. All right, so now it's time to apply a grout. I've got the, I just went with the pre-mixed grout. This is good for 16th of an inch up to half inch joints. We're working with 16th of an inch, so this should work, should work just fine. Um, if you're using a, mix, a mixed grout that you mix with water, then sanded grout would be for joints that are eighth inch and and greater and then unsanded grout would be for joints that are eighth inch and less. So like I said, we're using the pre-mix grout. I got my float, my grout float, and I'm just going to try and minimize um, how much I put on the tile because I don't want to have to clean it up, especially with these groove tiles. So I'm just going to try and press it into um, each one of these joints uh, as carefully as possible. So as far as applying the grout, it's actually pretty simple. You just use a grout float um, and then you hold it on a 45 degree angle and kind of push it into your seams. Now for against the wall, obviously it's gonna be a lot harder to get the grout float in there and push it in. So what I used was actually like a pastry bag or like, a, um, like something that you would use for icing. And I squeezed it into the corners and then I came back with my finger and kind of pushed it in. Now, after the grout has a few minutes is all it takes for the grout to start to harden up. And then you can come back with a wet sponge and wipe it out and try and get as much of it out as possible from around the grout lines. After that is done, you come back with a wet sponge and a very clean sponge. You're gonna to wanna to clean it after every couple of wipes, but cleaning with a wet sponge after all that is over will get that haze and remove that haze from the tile um, and kind of reduce the cleanup after all this is done. So we got the grout done. Um, overall, it went, went okay. It wasn't that bad of a process. However, the texture tile did make it a little bit more difficult. So we need to wait about three days for that grout to set up and feel fully cure before we can apply our final sealant to the tile. So what we're gonna do while we're waiting is we'll move on to installing the vanity and the toilet. With our feature wall installed and ready to go, now it was time to move on to the vanity. We actually started building this during the tiling process, like in between the waiting periods and whatnot, but it's a simple vanity. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, we did taper the legs at the bottom just to add a little flare there. Uh, it's got some inset panels. And then the, um, the door to the vanity is very simple. It's a slab, plywood slab door. And then what I did was instead of adding a handle onto it, I I put a one by two on it that which I ran through a router with a uh, quarter inch, I wanna say it was a quarter inch round over bit. And essentially we just cut a groove in that one by two um, to act as a handle. It's just kind of a routed handle. So we lined up that groove on that one by two with the edge of the door and it works perfectly. Um, and it's just a cool look. It's kind of like a hidden handle look kind of deal. Um, and it worked out really well. We love the way that it looked. Simple vanity, not too much to it. Uh, made out of plywood and one by twos. If you want the plans for this vanity, I've got those on my website and I'll link those down below as well as a link right up top. 
As far as installing the concealed door hinges, if you're interested in learning more about that process, I've actually got a whole nother video dedicated to just that, which I will link above. So for the top, we wanted to do something really cool and my father-in-law actually had some leftover two and a half inch thick cypress slabs. Um, I don't know where he got those from, so I can't help you with that, but they were left over and it was like just enough to do the, um, to do the top for the sink. However, they were in strips, so we wanted to cut those down and then glue them up um, to create a 20 some inch deep countertop. So we used uh, some wood glue and clamps to do that and uh, ran those edges through the joiner first to make sure that we had a nice straight um, jointed surface to, to glue up. We were kind of stuck with the location of where the faucet was mounted and then when you added the vessel sink to the top of the vanity, it was just too tall and there wasn't enough room to get your hands underneath of the faucet. So what we ended up doing was cutting a hole in the wood top. To cut that hole, we actually needed to first start by um, getting the, the countertop cut into the wall or actually scribed into the wall. Um, so we, we marked or transferred the variations of the wall onto the top um, and then we cut that off with a circular shawl and a straight edge as, as close as we could. So then we had a nice tight fit against the wall. Now I left some extra room on that top to, so that I could cut it down uh, for these very purposes. Once I had that all cut down exactly how I wanted to the vanity, then we started working on that hole. So I laid out exactly where I wanted the sink and kind of centered it with the faucet. And then I traced the outline of the sink. Then we brought it back over to the shop. I drilled a hole in that. And then I actually used a new blade that I got from Diablo recently. And uh, it's a reciprocating blade because my jigsaw wasn't gonna be long enough to go around and I was worried about blade deflection and all that stuff. So uh, Diablo actually just recently came out with a scroll reciproca reciprocating blade. And um, it, it kind of did exactly what I wanted it to do. It made, um, it's easy to make those nice tight turns uh, or just being able to manipulate the blade exactly how you want to. And it actually left a, a very nice clean cut. Once we got the hole cut out and made sure that the sink was gonna fit, then we could take the slab over and I put a half inch chamfer on the, which is a 45 degree uh, router bit. Um, and I put a half inch chamfer all the way around the bottom, well, on the, on the front and the left side, as well as the top of the, of the slab. After we got it all sanded up, then we were able to apply a wipe on poly with Jamie put several coats of that on just to be able to protect that wood from the water that it would see. So while that was drying, then we moved on to the trim. I finished up the trim inside of the um, bathroom because this was all still rough construction. So we have baseboards and then trim around the doors to, to finish as well. After we allow the grout to cure for three days, that's gonna make sure that the, the grout is fully dry. Then we can seal or clean and seal the tile. Some of the grout we weren't able to get off the tile, especially this tile since it's got some sort of this texture to it. So we used that cleaner to get all of the grout off the rest of the tile. And then it was time to seal it again for the final time with the 511 impregnator. One thing that I forgot to mention was during the sealing process, we also used one of their products from Miracle Seal. It's called the Mira Brush Applicator and Tray. Um, it's a very inexpensive disposable tray. It's like four bucks on Amazon, and um, it's perfect for applying sealant. The, it's got a nice little sponge applicator, and the tray is part of the packaging. So um, I thought that was pretty pretty cool. Um, but being able to apply it with a large flat sponge uh, was a great idea by Miracle and. It was perfect for getting it on the wall as well and applying it to those large format tiles. Now the 511 impregnator is great for preventing stains. However, you're gonna need to clean tile on a regular basis no matter what. 
So what I recommend for that process is a tile and stone cleaner. This is perfect for um, natural stone tile, grout, any kind of masonry surface. Um, and it's a ready to use formula that comes in a spray bottle. You just spray it on and clean it like anything else. It's just designed for this purpose. Now it was time to kind of put the finishing touches on the bathroom. So I went ahead and installed the faucet onto that rough, in, that rough plumbing that was there, um, which it was a pretty easy install. Uh, we got that installed as well as the toilet and the toilet if you're interested in learning more about the installation of the toilet I've got an entire video dedicated to it how to install a toilet as well um, so I was pretty familiar with the process and it went pretty quickly With the faucet and the toilet installed, we can move on to finishing up that top and sink install. So the top gets mounted to the top of the vanity and it's simply we just screwed um, through the top of the vanity into the top, uh, which was pretty easy. And then it was time to finish up sealing all of those joints. So we ended up using um, caulk to do that. Uh, DAP has a product called Stretch, which is great because it's going to be able to fill larger gaps and stretch I think I want to say it stretches up to like three inches or something crazy like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna learn more about all the details that went into this bathroom, there's gonna be a link right here and you can click on that. That's gonna take you over to the website. If you wanna learn more about Miracle Products, that link is gonna be in the description. Until next time, be safe and happy building.